first. We're making history. This is Tony Canuli, the marketing director for HBRN Positive Power Radio and the host of the Slant Edge Zone. And today marks our very first Leadership Factory Google Hangout with Mr. Oren Woodward. Oren uh, will be bringing, he's, he's in here today. I see Oren and I also see Claude, Claude Hamilton up in uh, Nova Scotia, uh, another amazing leader in the networking space. And today we're going to be talking about topics on leadership. We're going to be talking specifically about mentorship and mentoring and just how critical it is to you know, success in anything in life. And uh, Oren, uh, for those of you that don't know his background, uh, you know, just an amazing gentleman, started off, uh, has humble, humble uh, beginnings, humble roots, and today has moved up to the number seventh. He's rated number seventh in the world as a leadership guru. And his blogs are in the top 100. He's followed by everybody. He's written several uh, great books, uh, which I know uh, you're going to talk a little bit about, and how uh, you've come about to where you are today, and, and how mentorship actually has been so important to you. And uh, so with that, I'm just so excited, Oren, to have you. And thank you, Claude, for joining us today on this first, foremost, HBR Hangout in a matter of a handful of months. You know, we've got tens of thousands of listeners right now on HBRN, Positive Powered Radio, with over 40 amazing posts. And this Leadership Factory Hangout, I can envision over the next several months, six to 12 months, having literally hundreds of thousands of watchers. And then, you know, actually after, we're going to have them up, uploaded on our YouTube channel. But I can see hundreds of thousands and hopefully eventually, I shouldn't say hopefully, eventually millions of people that will be watching this, bringing the kind of value that I know that this will bring. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Oren, for you to chat just a little bit about your background and uh, as well with uh, Claude. And thank you so much for joining us on this uh, amazing, amazing first year with HBRN. Thank you, Tony. You know, I love leadership. I, you know, get started in community building and I certainly <clears throat> did not set the world on fire and very early was exposed to my own weaknesses, exposed to being an engineer and really technical, loving man, uh, I wasn't relating too well with the average person. So it took a lot to really admit that um, I'm the one that I was the problem, and I had to change. And so when I started reading books like Magic of Thinking Big, How to Win Friends and Influence People, How to Have Confidence and Power with People, different books like that, it really exposed me to, to realize that it wasn't the other person's problem, it was my problem. I was constantly talking in what's in it for me, what's in it for me, and nobody cares what was in it for me. And so um, the revelation was that if I wanted a bigger business, I had to change. And I think that's the whole point of leadership is that anyone can be a leader if you're hungry enough to change. And that's why I'm so excited about our guest speaker today, um, our guest on the show, this Leadership Factory. I'm so pumped for it because I know it's going to help people grow and change. If you're hungry, if you're hungry and listening to this, I don't care how bad you are, I know you can get good. I mean, the gentleman, Claude, that I'm about ready to introduce, he is so hungry. I, I talk about if you're going to win in a community building or really in any leadership uh, type of business, you're going to have to be hungry enough to eat nails. If you're willing to eat nails, you can grow and you can become anything you want to become. But so many people want to have it easy. They want it, well, as long as I don't have to change, can I win? I'm like, look it. Winning and changing go together. If you want to win, you're going to be changing. If you want to lose, you don't have to change. You're doing really good as you are, or at least I was. And so, Claude, I want to uh, ask you a couple questions on the whole concept of mentoring because I've watched you over triple plus your business in the last several years and, and just absolutely exploding right now. I think uh, in the, all of the different leaders that I mentor, you're certainly one of the top two or three as far as hunger and willingness to change. And could you share some thoughts on what does the whole, ment what does the mentoring process mean to you? And when you come in uh, for yourself, for first personally, when you sit down uh, with your mentors, what what are you looking for, and um, what is the most important thing a mentor does for you? Well, congratulations, Tony, on this show. I'm uh, really excited for you, and I can't wait to follow it and be involved. Lauren, I appreciate the introduction. Um, I think uh, one of the most important things that I remember um, when looking for a mentor is that the passion of the protege determines the impartation of the mentor, and so. 
you know, I want it to be a win-win for, for in, you know, in this specific situation. You know, my goal, uh, Tony, I don't know if you know this, but my goal was to get mentored by Oren. That was my goal. Um, cool. I watched Oren, and uh, I saw him from afar, and then I saw him from up close. And I said, man, you know, I got to get that guy's attention. I need, I, I need uh, what to know what he knows. And so I made it a goal to um, have his time. And so I said, well, how best can I do that? And um, I and I read his book, Launching Leadership Revolution, which was New York Times bestseller. And in there, he talked about hunger. And so I just said, I just need to be the most hungry student. And my passion to be his student will. Uh, make him passionate about mentoring me, and so I wanted to make sure that I made myself look like one, you know his best student. You know, I wanted to earn his time by uh, making it a win-win. When you know, one of the most important things you do as a leader is equip other leaders, and so I wanted him to get results from mentoring me, so that it wasn't just me taking; I was returning something. So I wanted to uh, be hungry and uh, make sure that I was a good. Um, I was a good use of his time that he was going to get a return on it so that it was a win-win. That's one thing Oren taught me is that, you know, make sure every relationship, it's not just win for me and lose for the other person. It's win-win for both of us. So uh, I wanted to make sure I earned my mentor's time. Hey, Tony. Yes, sir. Hey, Tony, before I, I, I wanted to just add one thing. I uh, spoke the last couple months. I was over on the east coast of Canada, and then I was in Ontario, Canada, and Claude had over a thousand plus people at both of those events and that's not even half of his organization so when he talks about being a hungry student and wanting to earn time he did that in spades I guess so wow well you know look at look at what's behind uh, Claude there or look at the library you know there's a saying success leaves clues right <laughs> and we can, we can see those clues definitely in there and you know Claude you know, your story is amazing. It reminds me a little bit of mine from many, many years ago. When I first got into the industry, I didn't, you said you looked for, you were actually looking for a mentor. You were looking, you know, you, you knew Oren had tremendous value as a mentor and you could be a great student. But, you know, you had to have developed that, that understanding and knowledge and belief that mentorship was important. And I know when I first started, uh, I, you know, I was given the book The Magic of Thinking Big. I was given How to Win Friends and Influence People. And as I was being indoctrinated at a very young age, at 18 years old, they said, well, you know, one of the most important things you can have is to listen to people that have gone where you want to go or are going where you want to go. So they imparted that belief in me, and that belief became significant. You obviously had that belief before you saw Oren, and you developed that belief, and maybe you could comment on how you understood, how you came to that belief, and how you can encourage people to have that belief as well. I think that's a great belief to adopt. Well, yeah. well I, I was involved in, in business for a while before I had the chance to meet Oren, and I had my share of good mentors and bad mentors, and, um, and sometimes I had no choice. You know, I had somebody who, who maybe had, uh, you know, they were doing their best, but they they did, maybe had some holes in their game, and I, and I said, well, I can sit here and be a victim of that, and uh, and I can blame that my success isn't on, uh, you know, blame it on somebody who's not a good mentor, uh, but then I would just stay where I was at, and so I, I, I said, man, sometimes I'm going to have to um, find the best in the person that I, that I have available, and so I kind of got a little bit far along, uh, but I did learn, you know, I, what I learned is that most of the problems that I had, and Albert Einstein said, you know, the problems we have in life can't be solved at the same level of thinking they're creative. So I got to the point where I'd created a lot of my own problems, not just once, not just twice, but, you know, I had could start to identify some patterns, but nowhere near what I could by when I met Oren. And that's one of the things that I learned is that Oren and a mentor was able to diagnose stuff for me um, that I couldn't necessarily see because he wasn't involved in the situation. So... I was like you, you know. I was in the military, um, and you know, you kind of you don't get to pick your mentor. Uh, you kind of get stuck with whoever. And then when I got into business, I I, I did realize that uh, if you want to, you know, very early on in my time in business, somebody uh, who was helping me said, "Be careful who you listen to. You might end up with their lifestyle." And that stuck with me, just like it stuck with you. And I just said, "Man, the 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 more I get better at, at finding." 
the right mentor and then being a good student, the further I'm going to go. And I've really hit the mother load with Orr, and he's, um, you know, he has been uh, amazing. I, I'm very lucky and very blessed and thankful. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I've had the opportunity here over the months to spend a fairly significant amount of time with Oren and understanding. And I've read his books, of course, and I'm just like you, I've listened to the CDs. and I mean, all the material that he puts out, it's just amazing because I, I believe in constant and never-ending improvement. And I've had plenty of mentors, really good mentors over the years. But one of the things I learned early on, and I'd love for you to comment on this, Oren, and uh, early on I did have some great mentors, but there were points where maybe I didn't have access to a personal mentor. And then I ended up with a surrogate mentor. In other words, when I was listening to Jim Rohn, for instance, in my car, he was my mentor in the car. When I would get on a, a video, I'd watch, it was my video mentor. You know, in other words, I envisioned uh, those people being mentors to me, even if I necessarily were, was communicating with them, but taking their message. But I chose the information and made a conscious decision. And I, one of the things that I learned from my mentor early on was is that, you know, what goes in your mind, you, you have control over. You really truly do. You have control over your decisions as well and how you develop your beliefs. So make careful choices of what you read, what you listen to, you know, uh, negative TV. Uh, you know, I don't, I tell people I watch a lot of TV. I only watch it. Though. I never turn it on. It sits in the corner. You know, it just sits there. You know, and that's, it looks good. And that's about it, right? And the only time I really use it is when I use it for things that I want to, like, you know, click the computer to and I want a bigger screen or, you know, whatever. And usually it's a, it's a positive message in the type of the content. So I'm very careful about what I read, what I listen to, who I, you know, what I watch. But I learned that I could have surrogate mentors at the time in the car, you know, when you go to events and you pick people to watch and learn. And, and, and then obviously, you know, personal mentors, you know, you can invite into your life. So what would you, what would you say about that, Oren? Because I, I know you are, are absolutely, I mean, I don't know anybody in the industry, honestly, better than, I, I believe, as an understanding of mentorship like you well I think I think first of all I, in my situation growing I had a lot of sur surrogate mentors I like that term um, you know the number one mentor for everybody if you really boil it down is the scoreboard the scoreboard tells you how you are doing if you're in a business and you want to grow your volume for example and if you notice your volumes not growing it's steady state so to speak then there's clearly something wrong because if you're in business and if you're doing the right things, your your volume should be growing. Or let's say you, you come up with a key criteria. Maybe it's uh, uh, it's the numbers in the seats. Maybe it's uh, the amount of people plugged into your training system. Maybe it's the amount of people on your subscription or your uh, of monthly ordering. Whatever it is, you come up with those criteria. And if those numbers aren't growing, then clearly you're doing something wrong. Now, the beauty of a real-life mentor is maybe they have a little more experience that they can kind of give you some clues on why that that's leveled off. But whether you have a mentor or not, if the biggest reason people need mentors is this thing we call self-deception. Nobody wants to see the truth in themselves. No, nope. you know, I love the Bible verse that says we uh, Paul where he said we suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Now he was meaning that in a theological sense with God, but I think that principle holds in all mentoring. When we see something that we don't like, we don't like the scoreboard, is it the natural thing to say, boy, I need to change, I need to grow, or it's, well, my upline's not helping me. Well, so-and-so is not helping me. Well, it's right. because of the economy, it's the gas prices, it's the inflation. It's, they'll come up with a thousand reasons why it's not working besides I need to grow and change. Well. My, the key for my mentoring is to constantly point the student back to the scoreboard because the scoreboard never lies. The mentoree may lie, but the scoreboard never lies. The scoreboard is telling you if you if your numbers if you're tracking the right numbers and they're not growing, you're doing something wrong. And until you change, your business will not change. And so, people who want the truth love me. People who don't want the truth hate me. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know too many people that hate you personally, but you know it's so funny because the truth will set you free. And what you're talking about in, at, at a future date when we do, uh, you know, a future leadership factory, I'm excited to get into. Uh, you do a talk on leadership lenses, basically the the way you look at life through your eyes. You know, and are you a a blamer? Or do you take responsibility? Are you a performer, or are you blaming somebody else why you're not performing? Are you a leader? 
and saying, I can't do what Lauren does, or I can't do what Claude does, or, or are you, you know, blaming everything in your life? I mean, so there's different lenses as you talk about, and, you know, what you just described is an epidemic, you know, and you've always said that, you know, we, we, have, we lack in leadership in the world, and we need more leaders, and that's absolutely true, but we have an epidemic of rationalization, justification, and denial, okay, and, and the truth is in, in, in seeing the truth and having metrics to measure and have, like you said, a mentor to help guide you and to have that scoreboard. With that, you can change and grow because we've grown up being a nation, unfortunately, of blamers for the most part, 95% are better. And is it any clue that 95% of the people are, are not really having the quality of life that they could and 5% do when you really understand the very premise of leadership? It's based on number one is awareness and taking responsibility. Where am I at today? And it's okay because we can change from today and move forward. And so that's one of the things I just love. And I, when I when I heard that, I was like, you mean I can take the tapes that I was programmed with growing up? You mean I don't have to listen to what my older brother said I, my life would be like? I could change my outcome? You know, and I could learn that. I could take responsibility. I could read and learn. And I can get better day by day. You know, the name of the show that I have on HBRN, The Slight Edge Zone, Simple Disciplines. Not big, huge quantum leaps, but a little bit every day. That 15 to 20 minutes of a good book, that watching a, an Orin Woodward Leadership Factory hangout, that listening to an HBRN radio network, listening to a CD in your car, drive by university, that mobile mentor, that surrogate mentor like we have with HBRN because the vast majority of our listeners listen via the mobile device. So knowing that you can reprogram, knowing that you can change and decide your outcome, decide that I'm going to live today the way I want to live today. When I really got that, it changed my life. You know, uh, Claude is a great example of someone who has that leadership lens. In the, let's see, four years plus that I've been mentoring him, I, can, I can't tell you, I cannot recall. Right now I've been thinking for as you were talking, I was trying to remember have I ever heard Claude give me an excuse? And in the whole time I've known Claude, I've never heard him give me an excuse. He'll say, yep, yeah, we didn't get what we wanted to do. We'll get it next time. And Claude, where did you come up with that? Was that from the military? I mean, Claude's a, a, the Canadian version of a, a Navy SEAL. He's that elite elite. He's not just in the military. He was the elite of the elite of the military. Where did you get that can-do, no-excuses attitude, Claude? Because I wish if I could impart one thing to every one of the people that I mentor, it's just like, no excuses, let's go get it, let's go get it done. Yeah, you know, I, I, I sometimes um, uh, I look back in, uh, at the military experience, and um, I sometimes shy away from telling people, yeah, I got it there, because a lot of people haven't got this, you know, didn't have that same experience. But I, I, so I do, I, I do think that in um, my time serving that I did get some attitude, uh, learn how to be, have a good attitude through adversity. But really, to, to be honest with you, um, one of the things for me over this past five years working with you is it's hard to give you an excuse because I watch what you do, and one of the reasons I love you is, um, is you read me. You know, you read more books than I do. You go through more stuff than I do, and, and, and I've watched you go through some tough times, and I've watched you still um, not not take excuses when, when you would have had many. And so, uh, you know, when I, I would feel really terrible trying to give you an excuse when uh, when your your uh, struggles have been way bigger than mine and you still came through. So, I, you know, um, and that's probably a, an important thing for a mentor is, um, you know, you lose the qualification of leadership when you refuse to mentor with somebody because you, if you're a leader, you got other people's lives in your hands and other people who are relying on you. And so you tell me who you show me who you're being mentored by, and I could probably predict uh, how big a leader you're going to be. And um, mm -hmm. and so I get a chance. You know, I I do know that uh, a lot of times, you know, my uh, ability to get uh, hit a goal has been keeping a good attitude longer than, than everyone else. But um, watching Oren do that has definitely, I, I, I would know I would walk away in shame trying to give him an excuse. You know, I would, uh, it would be because I just watched what he's gone through and, uh, and kept a good attitude for him. You know, 
when Oren says in five years he hasn't seen me give an excuse, in five years I haven't um, I haven't seen Oren, you know, uh, my mentor, uh, you know, take the opportunity to um, use uh, the many times he would have had a chance. If he said to me, Claude, you know, I got this and this and this, and I just uh, can't do something or that, uh, then – but he's always set a good example, which I think is important. That's why I like him as a mentor. Well, you know, in, in leadership is leading by example, not telling and then saying, okay, I'll, you do, you go do this, and I'll do this. That doesn't work, does it, Oren? We, we know that. But, you know, you, I have a question for both of you. I want to start with Oren. And, you know, what you just uh, what you were just sharing, you know, is this solution thinking. You know, Oren is, I believe, is the leader he is today because, you know, he does always immediately, he's wired now over time. You know, maybe rewired, and maybe he had to rewire thinking because I think every great leader eventually, you know, thought a certain way and then eventually changed and grew. But he's so wired now to just thinking of the solution. Okay, let's not focus on the problem because we'll bring it closer to us. We don't want the problem. We want a solution. We want solutions to the problem. And my understanding of leadership has always been that your, your test of leadership is, is the better you get at solving the problems. As Jim Rome would say, don't ask for things to be easier. Ask for you to be better. Ask for your abilities, you know, your God-given abilities to be better at actually solving problems. And or you become an amazing, significantly huge problem solver. You've had major challenges. Not, you know, building a network, the success and lifestyle that you have had is phenomenal. But at the same time, you've been through challenge after challenge, and you've gotten stronger through that adversity. I always like to say, you know, in, in our community building, diamond is a typical, you know, pin rank, right? But really, what is a diamond? You know, a diamond is a, is a precious stone. But how did it become that beautiful, precious, valuable stone? It was a piece of ugly lumped coal that through many years, thousands or hundreds of thousands of years of pressure, you know, in time became a beautiful stone. Well, you went through a lot of pressure and a lot of, you know, adversity, but you kept focused on the solution, kept focused on where you wanted to go, and you moved forward. And so that's thinking of solution thinking. But my question for you when it comes to mentorship, now, because the, there are people going to be watching this, they're going to go, well, that's great. Claude, you picked, you know, Oren Woodward as your mentor. Wow, and you're blessed you are. And you are blessed. And I am too, because I, I pick his brain whenever I can, whenever we all allow me you know, to do so. And I, I love that. I love having that relationship. Not everybody has that. What would you suggest, first I'm going to start with you all, what would you suggest for those that, you know, we talked a little bit about a surrogate mentor and how you can start to put that in play. But if someone doesn't have a mentor, what would you suggest for them? And the other thing I wanted to just kind of think on that is that in every community, there's usually multiple people that actually can provide that role as well. So share with people why they need to immediately take action from this leadership hangout today, find a great mentor, okay, and create a covenant, create a, you know, a, an agreement with them to work with them, to develop, and, and why they need to take action right away and how to, and maybe some thoughts on that. I remember reading uh, Ronald Reagan, a book on Ronald Reagan, and someone was asking him uh, late in his second presidential about what a great man he was, and he said, I'm not a great man, I just hang out with great ideas. And I remember that just hit me so hard because that's how I feel. It's like I don't, you know, the, the really the greatness of an individual is just how um, how often are they swimming around great ideas? And the more you swim around great ideas, then you can recognize the counterfeit. And, and so to become uh, great at anything, first of all, you've got to be willing to invest the time and recognize as you're climbing the mountain, you're going to take a tumble. You're going to skin your knees. Many times you're going to fall right back down. In fact, I don't even know I have a good student until they get a good gut shot, knocks them flat. You know, Claude was tough because of some training he had in the military. Whether you get it there, whether I got it from wrestling practice. Man, I was wrestling the second in the state every day, and he was pummeling me. He was the weight class above me, and he pummeled me every day in practice. I only wrestled varsity one year, and I got twisted in so many pretzels. But I got tough. I can't stand losing. So every day I'm like, you go ahead and kick my butt again, but I'm going to take it out on my competitor when I have the wrestling match. Somewhere in life you got to figure out that inside of you there's a champion and he's crying to get out. And this, this culture of cowardice, we're going to break through it and we're going to bring out the champion again. 
So I, I don't wish people easy in life. In fact, I'm not even going to mentor you until I see you get take your shot. And when you get knocked down, then I'm going to say, are you going to sit there and stay down? I'm going to say something that's totally politically incorrect, but hear me out. When I get around somebody to determine whether I'm going to mentor them, I there's a smell of battle. And you can tell that smell of battle is that gun smoke, man. They're out there making things happen. If I smell urine, I don't want to be mentoring them. So you, if you're going to wet on yourself, you're not going to be a champion. So decide first you're going to be a champion that you will not – you will get knocked down, but you won't stay down. Then second thing, get around the greatest ideas. Find the best books on the subject. I know when I wrote Resolved, and I'm not I mean, trying to plug my own book, but I try to capture the 13 principles that I've learned will make a difference in your life if applied on a consistent, slight-edge basis, as you said, Tony. And so if you can't mentor with the people, then read their books. Get their thinking. If you think the way champions think and have the courage that the champions have, you will produce the same results. I remember looking at all those guys that had big businesses, and I had a puny business, and I was cowardly, and I was wetting on myself. But I said, someday I'm going to be a champion, and I'm going to find other men and women that want to be champions, and I'm going to teach them what I did, and if they've got the same courage, we have a recipe for success. Just add your courage. Mm, that is an unbelievable, unbelievable message. You know, it starts with that courage and that hunger. And boy, I tell you, Claude, I, I hate I turn it over to you to follow after that. You <laughs> should always end with orange, is what I found. You know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, the, the thing is, uh, and what, I like what your point is, is like there's a lot of people who don't get the chance to get around Orin, and, and and like I said, you know, along the way to get to the point where I was blessed with Orin, I had a lot of other mentors that I had to perform with first before I got to him. But one thing about Orin, so yes, I get to uh, mentor with Orin, but that as soon as I got his time, I didn't shut down everything else. You know, he expects me to be listening to CDs and reading books, and he expects me, like, he's just a, he comes in and t he knows me the best because I'm the honest with him, and he... He move, you know, he tweaks me and stuff. But if I was sitting there saying, I'm not going to read books and listen to CDs, and I'm not going to listen, you know, to the get on the, to your leadership factory, and if I wasn't going to do anything else to prepare myself, he would cease to want to mentor me. So anybody out there listening to this, they need to understand that they got to get into CDs and books. They got to get on the, uh, you know, hangouts like this and listen to the, the the radio station. They need to be hungry for it because leadership. Right develops daily not in a day you know it develops daily not in one day and so it's when the leader stops preparing he's gonna stop winning and I know Oren expects me to keep preparing so I have a ton of surrogate mentors I have you know uh, all the books I read and all the CDs I listen to and other people that Oren mentors I, I listen to their CD and read their books you know like Chris Brady because um it's my responsibility. So basically, you know, your mentors owe me five or ten percent. You should be filling it up with all these other sources and doing what Oren said, swimming in ideas, and then Oren can take those ideas and tighten them up for me. So, uh, you know, I appreciate the, uh, you know the chance to talk to you today. But that that's uh, I agree with Oren. Oh, that was great, great message, and you're a great student. And I, you, you're the the student is always a the teacher is always a great student, and you. have Proven that that is the case, Claude, and uh, amazing. But when you have someone like Warren mentoring you, it's uh, boy, I tell you, this doesn't get any better than that. And I and I say that because I've been around this industry for over 25 years. I've had phenomenal mentors, and and they've all been great. They've all added to a lot. But I, I tell you, Warren, you've really taken it to another level. And your book, The 13 Resolutions. I know you won't plug it. I know you you're very humble, and I really respect that about you. But those that are watching this, that's not a book you need to think about. It's not a book you should, well, I might get it someday. You need to get it now. And not only do you need to get it now, you need to start reading it and applying what's in there because it will absolutely change your life. And we're busy. We've got a lot of information bombarding us every day. And that is one of those books that you need to take. And speaking of uh, surrogate mentorship, you know, if you go back to Think and Grow Rich and Napoleon Hill, you know, he spent 20 years researching the most wealthy people in our society. One of the first things he talked about in there was you know the number one reason for failure is that people listen to their friends, family, and neighbors. And we kind of touched on this in this interview, but I wanted to kind of move towards the close here. 
with talking about them, you know, we've talked about books and CDs and personal professional development, why it's important, who you will become will determine everything in life. We know that. We, we understand that the information is available and through technology like this one. You know, when we got started years ago, all of us have been around the, the networking block for a while. We had to fight for that info. We had to sit front line and center. We had to drive for it. We didn't have this. We had maybe got a tape, you know, that you could put in your car, and that was about it. Really, there wasn't much else. Read a book. But now we've got leadership hangouts. We've got radio networks like HBRN, Positive Power Radio. It provides that 24-7. I mean, we've got so much. It's like we're spoon-feeding it to people. But one of the things we talked about was the law of associations. And, you know, the old saying, you can tell your income by the income of your five best friends. And then when I remember when I heard that, it's like, I need new friends. I mean, you realize that very quickly, who you're going to associate with. But Napoleon Hill, in that book, he, he, I, the greatest example of surrogate mentorship came about for those, it's kind of controversial, but for those that have, have not read Thinking Grow Rich, they need to. And those that haven't read it in a few years, should go back and read it again. But he talked about how he would literally visualize and see himself with the greatest leaders of our time. You know, even though they may not have been there physically with him, in his mind, he visually imagined it, and his subconscious brain believed it, and he literally had Ben Franklin, for instance, mentoring him, or whoever, you know, Napoleon, for instance, as far as his you know, leadership abilities on the field as a general, whatever person he wanted, he was able to take that. I think that's the greatest example I've ever seen of surrogate mentorship. But let's talk just a little bit as we move, as we move forward on, um, on the law of association, and let's, why don't we close up on that, and... Um, I just think that it's so important to, to realize who you're around, how to evaluate who you're around, and how to make decisions to either limit some time or expand time with those people. You know, they say uh, if you hang out with dogs, you get fleas. That's the old southern saying. And I am I am amazed. You know, before I plugged in, before I had leadership, I hung out with a whole bunch of really negative, stinking, thinking people. And, you know, and my language was bad, my thinking was bad, and I can remember reading Magic of Thinking Big, and it was just like, wow, do people really think like that? Because I wanted to think like that. I mean, I, I thought, boy, it'd be great if I could think like that, but can you really think like that? And right. then I actually went to a meeting, and I saw people, I saw husbands treating their wives with respect. I'm like, you mean you could actually be married and be happy? And, um, uh, you know, all these, it just was such a culture shock for me because I was in such a bad place that, you know, the littlest bit of light can make all the difference for someone that's groping around in darkness. And so there's that little bit of light. And then your responsibility as a student is to identify any light in your life and start moving towards the light. By moving towards the light, you're automatically leaving darkness and going more into the light and the more you grab that light start opening it up and more sunshine comes into the room and then all of a sudden you look back and like what why did I ever hang out over there but you just don't know what you don't know so I don't it doesn't matter where you're at right now you could be totally knocked down you could be losing your house you could be in all these different situations financially busted but you gotta start somewhere you gotta get a firm foundation and say I, I have some people willing to help that's why I love the whole community building, uh, networking, home-based business industry and what Doug Fireball is doing because he's giving access to great information. Some of the greatest leaders are sharing programs, mm -hmm. uh, just like yours, Tony, and sharing truth with people. So you've got to start to go towards the light, quit suppressing truth, and start seeking truth. And the more you apply truth in your life, the greater your success will be. And the way to do that is through association because when you see other men and women applying truth, and it takes courage to apply truth, the easiest thing to do is to believe your own lies. But then you have to suffer the results from that. But when you start dealing with truth, and, you, and one of the greatest ways to have courage is you don't, you can't be taught courage. You actually are, it's actually caught, not taught. It's caught because you see other men. You see men like Claude that'll stand up. He has so many courageous leaders on his team because they look at Claude and say, well, look at Claude. He's at the front line in the battle. I will step up and do the same. And so associate with courageous leaders. And if you, as just the same principle, if you hang out with dogs, you get fleas. If you hang out with dreamers, you get a big dream.
Wow. Amen. That's, uh, boy, you got me fired up. <laughs> this is great. And Claude, why don't you, uh, why don't you, uh, you know, just bring some, bring some thoughts onto that. And uh, once again, gentlemen, it is, it's a, it's an absolute pleasure, and, and I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to do great service with, uh, with both of you. Thanks, Joe. I'm, uh, I'm excited that you asked us. Uh, you know, Oren is, you can see why Oren, uh, you know, one of the things I always think of Oren, I say, man, you should write a book because, uh, which he has, but a book on mentor <laughs> millionaire. You know, like he has a, is a uh, he doesn't just mentor, you know, uh, he mentors some of the most successful people that I personally know. And, uh, and so he mentors a really high level, but then he also has some people that, you know, are just getting started in business. And then he's got people who aren't even in his business. And, and so the spines of the weak stiffen in the presence of the bold. That's a saying that we have in my community, that the, the, our team. Uh, the spines of the weak stiffen in mm -hmm. the presence of the bold. And so I like that. sometimes I need to be the one that's bold. Sometimes they need to. And that's what the team is all about. But, um, you know, when people – I want to make it so when people get into association with me, they know that we're stronger as a team than we are apart. And wow. then um, – and that's one of the things that Oren's taught me is, you know, as a team – no one can beat us. When we're apart, we can be beat. And so uh, when people feel like some relationship-based accountability and they want to perform because they're part of a team, uh, they'll perform for that over money. They'll perform for that over anything else is that they want to be part of a team where, where people stand for their convictions and want to do the right thing and be the right thing. And so uh, I, I, I think that's uh, after you get money out of the way and you get a lot of those other things handled, uh, what else makes you get up in the morning? What else makes Oren do what he does every day uh, and take his time to do that is because, uh, you know, be creating a community of winners and, and, uh, and not just the community of winners that benefit us, but creating a community of winners that can change our country, change our community, which uh, we both know right now both our countries uh, could do some changing. Boy, that is absolutely true. But you know the old saying, if you want to change the world, and you want to change, we'll say the country, or you want to change the family or the community, change yourself first, then you can change your family, then you can change the community, then you can change the, the state, the country, the world, right? And then eventually uh, the, the, the solar system. <laughs> so absolutely. This has just been a phenomenal, phenomenal interview. And, you know, I just you, you're talking about, the 13 resolutions, you're talking about having a philosophy, you know, set the sail. If you don't set the sail, you're going to end up on the rocks. You're going to end up like a buoy, you know, moving back and forth in the water. And that's one of the reasons, you know, you, you live a, you have uh, these resolutions that you live by. I know that we'll spend more time in the future leadership, hang out on those resolutions, and we'll spend some time on it. But this has been a great, great interview. And, and uh, Oren, before we go, maybe you can, uh, do you have any sense of what we may be talking about on the next Google Leadership Factory Hangout. I think we're going to talk about purpose. I think we'll start with purpose and helping to identify or detect your purpose because when a man knows or when a man or woman knows what they're supposed to do, that really just gives them that extra oomph to go get it done. And so uh, I think that's where it all starts is what are you supposed to do and do it with excellence. So I think we ought to talk about that. Uh, I agree. I'm excited about that. And my tip for everybody this week is, is go out and get the 13 resolutions. Get Orange Book. Go to his blog. He's got phenomenal information in there. I, I read it every time he puts a post out. One of the first things I read before I look at anything negative, I read Orange Book's blog. And just remember something. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. So learn those resolutions and decide which ones will empower you. Decide the ones you want to live. I believe all of them. But decide what and create your own life. So this has been this is the, our first HBRN Leadership Factory Hangout with Leadership Guru on with, with special guest Claude Hamilton from Canada. And this is Tony Canuli, HBRN Positive Power Radio Marketing Director and show host of the Slight Edge Zone. Appreciate both of you. Have a great week and God bless. Thanks.